Hi, welcome back. So we're talking about demand forecasting and the major short-run decisions that are made if you are able to forecast demand accurately. It doesn't end on the short run. The long run, there are long run decisions that are also made. And these decisions are guided by the forecast you do. The forecast you do. So the first we want to talk about is price policy. If you are able to forecast the demand um, of your commodity, what quantity will be demanded? It helps you fix a particular price you think will help increase your demand. Right? So that is also very important. So price policy. Whether your price, the, the price of your commodity will be very high or low will, will, will be very important. Let me give an example. So um, there was a time this company called Fanice. There was a time the company was torn between either increasing the price of Fan Yogo and all, all its products, either increasing the price or reducing the quantity. So they employed an economist to research into it. If we increase the price, would, would the demand for Fan Ice go down? The economist did a very good job and he advised them that with um, the research I have done, I've realized that if you should increase the price, the quantity demanded will fall drastically to your surprise. So after he doing the forecast, he advised that don't increase the price for now, just keep the price there. And if you want, you may want to increase the quantity, uh, decrease the quantity. And that has helped Fanice to survive till now. Though the price has increased a bit um, because of other related um, conditions, but that initial decision of Fanice was to maintain the price. It also helps in promotion policy. So, if you are able to forecast your demand, for instance, if you forecast your demand and you realize that your demand will be very, very, very low, then you have to start um, putting in place some advertisement policies that can whip up the demand in the future. So it helps to make such a, a long-run decision. The third is expansion of existing capacity. If your demand is going to be very low in the future, there is no need for you to expand. But if you focus and you realize that the demand will be very, very high, then it will be very good to expand your existing capacity now so that the, the increase in demand will be... Um, the, the, increase, the increase in demand in the future will be met by your expansion today. The next is diversification of the product mix. If your demand is going to be, maybe you are producing just one commodity, and it is likely that your product will, the, the product will have a very low demand in the future. Demand forecast will help you know if your product, the demand for your products falls, what other products are going to be demanded? If you get to know, you will diversify. You start producing other products in addition to the products you are producing now in the long run so that um, more products can be bought which are from you in the future. It's all, it's all, it's, it's all pivoted on you having a very good demand focus. The last but one it helps you to change the location of your plant. If you focus your demand in Tema and you realize that in the future demand will be very, very low, but Ashaiman might be a very good place, what you do is you will change the location of your plant and start producing. Maybe you, you will relocate your factory to Ashaiman for you to benefit enough from your production. And the last is manpower planning you employ more hands when demand will uh, when when demand you you expect demand to increase if you don't do a very good forecast and just through judgmental decisions and others you employ more people now and demand falls you make losses so it helps in manpower planning now we are just drawing the curtains down um let's look at the steps in demand forecasting First of all, you have to get to know the objective of your forecast, the nature of your forecast. So 
whether you do a long term forecast or a short term forecast is very important then the nature of your good your good is it a very durable good um is it an inferior good is it a normal good it helps to forecast right so let me let me give a practical example assuming your good is an inferior good and the people in your community are are getting a lot of money their incomes are increasing it uh, you would have to do a very good forecast to know whether when their income are increasing they will stop buying your good or not if your good is an inferior good obviously when their income increases they will stop buying your good so getting to know the nature of your good helps you get um to do a very good forecast the third is determinants of demand to do a very good forecast you have to know all the determinants of demand it is not only price that determines the de the quantity demanded of a commodity sometimes the taste and preference of consumers is also important ha have consumers formed the habit of consuming your commodity what are what are also the price of your substitutes all these determine the demand of your commodity and they are supposed to be involved in you forecasting demand the next is analysis of factors so the determinants of demand must also be analyzed very well and aside that factors that affect your supply must be analyzed for instance if you are a farmer one factor that will affect your supply is the weather condition so if you do not expect demand to be very high you might not even bother to do irrigation or something analyzing the factors hinges really on the determinants of demand the the factors that determine what, um, whether people will buy more of your commodity or not let's do a quick analysis on one of the determinants of demand cigarettes maybe you are selling cigarettes and you are selling cigarettes in a village that does not um, express any interest in cigarettes it will not fly your, your demand will not go high but sell cigarettes in a city where people are really ad are addicted to smoking because they are addicted to smoking demand for your commodity is likely to be steady it will keep rising and rising and rising because they are addicted to it so with a very good analysis of um, the other factors that affect demand it will help you do a very good forecast right the last but one is choice of techniques what technique are you going to use a choice of technique is very important to do a very good forecast there are some techniques that are called econometric techniques that are supposed to be used some people might just use their their judgments oh looking at how people are uh are consuming my product in the future they will still consume more it's not a very good forecast so the technique to be used is very very important some people might decide to use questionnaires questionnaires you send the questionnaire to consumers and ask them oh do you do you, do you, do you enjoy this good do you think you will recommend this good to someone that is a very good technique it's called a qualitative technique you can also decide to use quantitative technique like using the historical data oh for the last past for, for, for the past two years monthly this is the demand of my commodity so if the, the demand of my commodity monthly is this then in the future the demand of my commodity will be this that is a quantitative technique so the choice of technique is also very important and the last is you have to test your accuracy so you can whatever formula or whatever strategy or technique you used you can decide to forecast into the present you use that same technique we are in 2020 um, we are in september 2020 you use that same technique to forecast from january to september which has happened already to check whether the forecast figures you are getting is very close if it is not very close that means it is less accurate so you have to use another technique that can make it more accurate right so um let's look at the techniques of demand forecasting there are two major techniques the first one is simple survey methods that one you use opinion polls you go to experts and ask them what do you think looking at um 
looking at the nature of the market do you think demand will increase because they are experts they have been in the field for long they can give a very good opinion that will be educative or informative so that is under simple survey methods another is consumers survey consumers survey for consumer survey you go to the com consumers themselves and um, you 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 engage all the consumers you can go to them with a questionnaire and then you take their answers on the questions you ask them and the last is sometimes the consumers are so many that you cannot get them you cannot get them all so you have to just take a sample a sample maybe a random sample you go to ashanti region and whoever you meet if the person says oh i have been consuming chocolate and your product is chocolate you you fill your questionnaire with their responses so that is simple survey methods and these are normally qualitative as i mentioned and the other method is complex statistical methods that is the quantitative you use time series analysis or trend method for the time series analysis um you get historical data maybe monthly data what the demand has been from 1990 to 2000 looking at the trend oh it has been increasing in this direction it gives you an idea that yes indeed in the future it is this direction it will increase there is another also called correlation and regression correlation looks at the relationship between one variable and another variable maybe you realize that there is a relationship between um the price of the substitute of the commodity anytime the the producers of the substitute decrease the price of the commodity the quantity demanded of my commodity also decreases so when you realize that correlation between those commodities it helps you predict now i've i've, re I've seen that the producers of the substitute of my commodity they are decreasing my pr their, their prices so it is likely to affect my demand in this direction and the last is simultaneous equation method so for simultaneous equation method um that is also quantitative i believe you in mathematics you've done simultaneous equation before um two equations having two different variables the variables are, so, are, are figures we do not know so we would have to get to know the figures. so for simultaneous equation method you 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 put your your analysis into an equation so instead of um instead of just doing a forecast you represent your commodity with a letter called y and the other commodity with a letter called x in two equations and then you solve to get to know y and x the value so the the value the very value of y will be the 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 forecast figure of y you are looking for and the very value of x will also be the forecast figure of x you are looking for thank you very much um i will be very glad to receive your questions for this lesson if you have any question you can just um go to the model and let us have a chat on it have a wonderful time bye bye